show. My name is Lily and this is my sister Charlotte. How are you all doing today? Let's try this again. How are you guys doing today? So, real life Lily, are you ready to tell your classmates about the brain? Then let's get started. Ugh, fine. Right now Lily is going to be drawing the neuron. The neuron is the basic building block of the nervous system. Neurons are important for fathoming our thoughts and memories and moods, and they allow us to communicate. Now I'll be explaining to you each part and function of the neuron as she draws it. Right now, she's drawing out the cell body, nucleus, and dendrites. The cell body is the cell's life support center. It is located in the center of the neuron. It is the factory of the neuron. It produces all the proteins for the dendrites and axon terminals. The nucleus is located in the cell body. It contains the, generic mater the genetic material in the form of chromosomes. The dendrites are the neuron's br bushy branching extensions. They receive messages from their other cells and conduct impulses towards the cell body. In simpler words, they look like roots. Lily is drawing the extending of, of the cell body. Now Lily is drawing the axon. The axon is the neuron's extension. It passes messages through its branches to other neurons or to muscles or glands. Fun fact! The axon can be as long as three feet. The myelin sheath is a series of fatty cells wrapped around an axon many times. These make an axon look like a necklace of sausage-shaped beads. It covers the axon of some neurons and helps speed neural impulses. Now Lily's drawing the axon terminal. It is the very end of a branch of the nerve's axon. They release neurotransmitters to excrete or inhibit other cells. The function of the axon terminal is to transmit a neurotransmitter from one neuron to another. It branches out at the end of the axon. Now that we're done explaining the neuron and its main parts, we're moving on to the brain and its four lobes. Let's get started. The lobes are located in the cerebral cortex, which is 80% of the brain. The four lobes are the frontal, parietal, temporal, and occipital. Lily is now drawing the frontal lobe. It lies just beyond the forehead. It is the boss of your brain, involved in speaking, muscle movement, and making plans and judgment. It is your emotional control, providing executive functions. Now Lily is standing on the parietal lobe. The parietal lobe lies at the top of the head and towards the rear. This part deals with sensory input for touch and body position and deals with reacting to your environment and senses. Now Lily is standing on the occipital lobes. This lobe lies at the back of your head and it deals with vision. Be careful if you bang the back of your head because you might go blind. Now Lily is standing on the temporal lobes. This portion of the cerebral cortex lies roughly above the ears. It includes auditory areas. It deals with language, hearing, and memory. Each receives information from the opposite ear. That's all for the four lobes of the brain. So remember to be careful with your head. It's very important, and it's what makes you you. Now, on to the difficult part. The rest of the brain. Right now, we're drawing the spinal cord. The spinal cord is the pathway for neural fibers traveling to and from the brain. It controls our simple reflexes. The next part is the brainstem. The brainstem is the oldest part in the central core of the brain. It begins where the spinal cord swells and enters the skull. Ultimately, it is responsible for automatic survival functions. At the base of the brainstem is the medulla. It controls breathing, circulation, and digestion. At the top of the brainstem is the pons. It helps coordinate movements and is responsible for rooting and filtering information. Now on to the cerebellum. It is located in the back of the brain, better known as the hindbrain. The functions include processing and sensory input, coordination, balance, motor memory, and it enables nonverbal learning. It also helps us judge time, mo modulate our emotions, and depict sounds and textures. If you injured your cerebellum, you might have difficulty walking, keeping balance, or even shaking hands. Next is the thalamus. It is located in the forebrain. It is the brain's sensory control center. It is responsible for sorting data and then determining where that data goes. It directs messages to the sensory receiving areas in the cortex and transmits replies to the cerebellum and medulla. Now let's move on to the hypothalamus. It is just below the thalamus. It is considered to be in the limbic system. This is one of the most important parts of the brain according to Miss Hagee. It directs several maintenance activities such as eating, drinking, maintaining body temperature, and homeostasis. It also helps govern the endocrine system via the pituitary gland. 
and is linked to the emotions and reward. Other important functions are strong nutrients, emotions, motivation, hunger, sex drive, and aggression. It is responsible for a lot, so make sure you thank your hypothalamus. Now onto the posterior pituitary gland. It is attached to the base of the brain located between the pons and the corpus callosum. It sends out hormones that control various bodily functions and is the master of the endocrine gland. It also regulates growth. Let's move on to the amygdala. It, it's, it is two lima bean sized new, neural clusters in the limbic system. It is linked to emotion associated mainly with aggression and fear. Now we have our hippocampus. The hippocampus is a neural center located in the limbic system. It helps pr process explicit memories for storage. Subregions of the hippocampus serve as different functions. One part is active as people learn to associate names with faces. Another part is active as memory engages. Memories are not permanently stored in the hippocampus. It migrates for storage elsewhere. Sleep supports memory consolidation. Next up, we will talk about the corpus callosum. It is located in the nerves as well as the divider between the two hemispheres of the brain. It is located in the center. The left brain deals with the mathematical reasoning and logic. It is the interpreter. It controls speech as well as the right hand. The right brain is responsible for the visual field. It makes inferences, recognizes solutions, helps us modulate our speech, and helps us recognize faces. The corpus callosum delivers messages between the two hemispheres so they can function as one. This is known as plasticity, and it is the brain's ability to change, especially during childhood. After damage, it reorganizes or builds new pathways based on experience. Finally, onto the cerebrum, or the cerebral cortex. The cerebrum is the most highly developed part of the human brain as well as the largest part. The cerebrum is located in the forebrain, where there are billions of neurons. The function of the cerebrum are motion, memory, language, thinking, perception, determining intelligence, determining personality, interpreting sensory impulses, planning and organization, touch sensation, and complex motor functions. It holds all the lobes of the brain we just talked about. Well, that's it for the brain. Did you guys learn a lot? That's great. Good job. Anything else you want to say, Lily? Zucker squared out. Uh, Lily? What? That looks a little off. That looks like a hamburger! <laughs> um, I don't think this can be fixed. I don't know about this, Lily. I can't draw a brain, it's so hard! Neurons are, are important for fathoming our thoughts and mem- Let's move on to the amygdala. Uh, the amygdala, amygdala, yeah.